So the complete trial was a multinational randomized trial that compared a strategy of complete revascularization to cool prevention only PCI. We randomized over 4,000 patients. This trial was published in the New England Journal in October this year, and the results were that for a primary outcome of cardiovascular death and new myocardial infarction, a complete revascularization strategy um, resulted in a 26% lower risk of the primary outcome compared to cool lesion only PCI. And for the secondary co-primary outcome that included ischemia-driven revascularization, the risk of the complete revascularization arm was reduced half. So whether or no considering routine non cool lesions PCI in this population could be related to underlying uh, plaque morphology is unclear. So the OCT complete sub-study was done because we wanted to understand the plaque morphology underlying in the non-culprit uh, disease in patients with STEMI. Uh, this was an observational study, so it was no uh, designed to link those, the plaque morphology to clinical events. It was not in the randomization. Uh, so the complete OCT was a multi-vessel OCT imaging sub-study that we performed in the non culprit disease when the patients were coming back to have a stage uh, PCI interventions. And we tried to image all the three vessels, even the STEMI vessel, if there was over 50 millimeters of anesthetic segment. We analyzed all of those pullbacks and uh, we divided the lesions in four different groups, uh, depends on the obstructive criteria, if they were over 70% stenosis or below, and uh, the other criteria was vulnerable plaque by OCT that was defined as a thin calf fibrateroma with a fibrous calf thickness below 65 micrometers overlying a lipidic plaque. So in those lesions we found that the obstructive thick lesions were more likely to have a vulnerable plaque and the non culprit disease in the complete trial definitely harbored more vulnerable plaque underlying. So actually now we understand what is behind those non culprit lesions and this is going to completely support the results in the complete trial because now we know that what is underlying is vulnerable plaque and the thin calf fibrateroma is a well-recognized predictor of a high risk of subsequent cardiovascular events. So then if we are dealing with vulnerable plaque in these stage PCIs, that's the way to reduce cardiovascular outcomes. So we did this, this sub-study was only done in 93 patients, only 93 patients got the multi-vessel imaging. So it will, be, it will be very good to do a higher scale study with the OCT because we think in this population, the semi-population, the underlying disease is completely under, underestimated by angiography. So in this sub-study, for example, we did imaging in 93 patients, but we found 425 segments with disease, um, which is reassuring that acute coronary syndrome implies a diffuse pathophysiology, not only vulnerable plaque in the culprit lesion, but in the whole coronary uh, vasculature. Um, so it is important to recognize that this is a very high risk population. And this have a study telling us that almost half of the patients with STEMI had a vulnerable plaque in a place far from the culprit lesion is very important. And so it will be very uh, important to do a higher scale trial with imaging, which is definitely telling us the biology of the plaque underlying.